we have studied the construction and working of solar cells in the previous lecture now we have to discuss about the equivalent circuit and the characteristics of a pn junction solar cell okay so first of all let us see the equivalent circuit of an ideal solar cell so what do you mean by an ideal solar cell ideal solar cell means a solar cell that is having no losses that does not have any losses a solar cell with no losses so if there are no losses that means there will not be resistances in the equivalent circuit so ideal solar cell will not have any resistances so this is the equivalent circuit of an ideal solar cell it can be represented as a current source in parallel with a diode and this current source is denoted as ih which represents the photon generated current the current is generated as a result of receiving solar radiation or photon and it is denoted as ih and this current will be directly proportional to the irradiance that is power in the solar cell so the photon current ih is directly proportional to solar radiation the intensity of solar radiation or the irradiance that is power in the solar cell okay and the junction diode can be represented by a diode itself so this is the diode and in the ideal diode this photon generated current flows like this and a part of the current will flow through the diode and remaining will be obtained at the output so this i represents the output current or load current provided by a solar cell so we can write the equation for i as i is equal to ih minus id so this will be equal to ih minus id what is id we can use the general equation for the diode current that is i0 into e raised to qv divided by alpha kt minus 1 so here i0 is the reverse saturation current of the diode i0 is the reverse saturation current and it can also be called as dark current so why it is called so so when there is no solar radiation that is under dark condition what will happen this diode will be ih will be zero in that case no photon current will be there when there is no solar radiation so under that condition this diode will be reverse biased so the current flowing through the diode will be the reverse saturation current i0 that is why i0 is also known as dark current now q is the charge of an electron that is 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb v is the voltage coming across the diode so here v is the voltage across this diode divided by alpha kt alpha is the diode ideality factor a constant known as diode ideality factor k is the boltzmann's constant and t is the temperature of the system in kelvin okay so this is the equation of current obtained from a solar cell from an ideal solar cell so now we know that all solar cells are not ideal there will be losses so in order to account for these losses we have to add include resistances in the equivalent circuit so now let us consider the equivalent circuit of a practical solar cell so a practical solar cell comprises of parasitic resistances so definitely there will be resistances in the equivalent circuit of a practical solar cell so let us see how these resistances arises from where these resistances comes into the equivalent circuit Okay. So in the equivalent circuit, we have series resistances as well as shunt resistance. So, so we have seen the construction of a p-n junction solar cell or a solar cell. So we know that there are metallic contacts on the p-layer and n-layer. There were metal grids, and also the p-layer as well as the n-layer have some resistances to the flow of current. so all these resistances are combined together and is represented as a series resistance rs in the equivalent circuit so a solar cellile metal contacts und metal grids und idinella resistance undayirikum 
In addition to that, a P layer semiconductor and N layer semiconductor and resistance on the physical resistance on the So all these resistance are combined together and is included as a series resistance in the equivalent circuit represented as Rs. Okay. Now there will be a leakage current across the PN junction. Across the junction or across the depletion layer there will be a leakage current and in order to represent this leakage current a shunt resistor is added because this current is flowing across the junction. So we have to use a shunt resistor to represent this leakage current. <coughs> so that is represented as RSH. So we have to minimize the leakage current. So this shunt resistor will have a higher value of resistance and the series resistance affects the drop of voltage. So it has to be minimized. It will have a minimum value. So in the equivalent circuit the series resistor will have a minimum value will have a small value and this shunt resistor will have a high value. Okay. So this is the equivalent circuit of a practical solar cell and now let us write the equation for the output current. So in this case output current I will be equal to IPH minus ID minus current passing through this RSH that is IPH minus ID minus IRSH. So the equation becomes IPH minus ID equation for current through the diode which is I0 into E raised to Q into voltage across the diode. So here due to the presence of RS voltage across the diode becomes V plus I into RS. So instead of V in the previous case we have used V here. So that is the voltage across the diode. So in a practical solar cell voltage across the diode becomes V plus IRS. So the remaining part of the equation is the same minus IRSH current flowing through this RSH. So it will be equal to voltage across this resistor divided by its resistance. So voltage across RSH will be V plus IRS. So V plus IRS divided by its resistance RSH. So this is the equation for output current of a practical solar cell. Now we have to draw the characteristics of the solar cell. So a solar cell will be having two characteristics. The current versus voltage characteristics and the power versus voltage characteristics. So IV and PV characteristics we have to draw. So both chara are drawn against voltage. Current is drawn against voltage. We have to plot power also against voltage. Voltage has to be varied from a minimum value to the maximum value. From 0 to its maximum value we have to vary the voltage. Now when will we get 0 voltage across a PN junction diode? So in order to get 0 voltage we have to short circuit the output terminals. So voltage across a short circuit will always be 0. So 0 voltage condition in the solar cell in the output in a short circuit area. So voltage across this short circuit will be 0 and through a short circuit maximum current will flow. We know resistance of the short circuit will be 0. So current flowing through it will be maximum. So when voltage is 0 or under short circuit condition current flowing from the solar cell will be the maximum and this current can be represented as ISC, the short circuit current. So this can be marked in the graph like this. So we know when voltage is zero, corresponding to zero voltage, the value of current is ISC, which can be marked here. Okay, when voltage is zero, we will get the maximum current that is ISC. We have marked that current here. So we got this particular point in the graph. So now, what is the maximum value of voltage? So we will get the maximum value of voltage when we open circuit the terminals of this solar cell. So corresponding to open circuit, the voltage will be maximum which can be denoted as VOC, the open circuit voltage. And no current will flow through an open circuit. 
So current will be zero under this condition. So when voltage is maximum, that is corresponding to VOC, voltage becomes maximum, the current will be zero. So we will get the second point, this particular point. So these are two extreme points of this IV characteristic, current versus voltage characteristics of a solar cell and rest of the curve will be the voltage VI carrier of a an ordinary PN junction diode when it is forward biased. So we got these two points, the point corresponding to zero voltage and current ISC and point corresponding to zero current and voltage VOC. Okay. And the remaining part of the graph resembles the forward biased characteristics of an ordinary PN junction diode. So we have got the VI carrier, the current versus voltage carrier of a solar cell. Now we have to draw the power versus voltage carrier. So as we have the VI carrier, we can calculate the power corresponding to any voltage. Power is equal to voltage into current and we have the VI carrier with us. So we have the value of current corresponding to all the voltages. So, so from this graph, calculate the power corresponding to different values of voltage. At some random values of voltages, calculate the value of power as a product of voltage and corresponding current. So now plot that values of power in another graph against the corresponding voltages. And then while plotting a graph, the shape will be like this. So we can see that at a particular point the power is maximum and this point is known as maximum power point and the voltage corresponding to that maximum power point is marked as VMP, voltage corresponding to maximum power and the current corresponding to that maximum power is marked as IMP, the current corresponding to maximum power. So this is the VI and PV characteristics of a solar cell. First of all, IV carrier is plotted and from this carrier we know the value of current at all voltages. So we can calculate the power corresponding to different voltages and we will plot that values of power against voltage in another graph. So joining all those points we will get the power versus voltage curve and the point at which the power is maximum is known as the maximum power point. The corresponding voltage is marked as VMP and corresponding current is marked as IMP. So this is all about the characteristics of a solar cell and now we have certain parameters here which are important in the performance of a solar cell that is short circuit current is here, open circuit voltage is here and some more parameters are there. Now let us see what are those parameters which are important in the performance of a solar cell. So first one is the short circuit current ISC. So we have seen ISC before. It is the maximum current that is obtainable from a solar cell when the output is short circuited. And this short circuit current depends on the solar irradiance level, area of the solar cell and characteristics of the material used for the cell. So we know this ISC, short circuit current, is directly proportional to IPH. This ISC will be equal to IPH minus ID minus IRSH. So ISC and IPH are directly related and we know that this photon generated current is directly proportional to the solar radiance level. The amount of solar radiation or the intensity of radiation that is received by the solar cell. So ISC depends on solar irradiance level and in addition to that it also depends on area of the solar cell and characteristics of the material used for the solar cell. Okay. So ISC is dependent on irradiance level and it varies linearly with irradiance level. So it is directly proportional to irradiance level and this short circuit current is also dependent on the temperature of the solar cell but it varies slightly with temperature. The short circuit current varies slightly with temperature and hence that variation can be neglected. Now the other parameter is the open circuit voltage VOC. 
So it is the maximum voltage across the solar cell terminals and it is obtained when the terminals are open circuited that is POC and it depends on quality of the material, the material used for making this solar cell. Then it is a strong function of temperature and it varies slightly with the irradiance. If we are considering short circuit current, it is a strong function of irradiance and it varies slightly with temperature. The case is different here, the case reverses here. VOC is a strong function of temperature and it is a weak function of irradiance level. And the equation for open circuit voltage in terms of short circuit current is VOC is equal to VT into logarithm of ISC divided by I0 plus 1. Here VT is the voltage equivalent of temperature. The temperature of that solar cell is converted to a voltage that is VT. So VOC is logarithmically related to ISC. That point is important. So VOC is logarithmically related to ISC, the short circuit current. So the next parameter, the important parameter is the fill factor. Fill factor is defined as the ratio of the maximum power obtainable from a solar cell to the product of open circuit voltage and short circuit current. So we know that VMP into IMP is the uh, power that a solar cell can produce, maximum power that a solar cell can produce. So maximum power output from a solar cell to the product of VOC and ISC. That is the fill factor. And the fill factor of a solar cell determines the quality of that particular cell. So if the fill factor is close to unity, more power, that means the array can give more power out. Okay. And the typical values of fill factor is in the range 0 0.7 to 0 0.8. So fill factor is a parameter that determines the quality of a solar cell. Its maximum value is 1. So next parameter is the conversion efficiency. So it is the efficiency of a solar cell. So we know efficiency is equal to output divided by input. Same expression can be used here. So conversion efficiency of a solar cell will be the ratio of power output from a solar cell to the power incident on the solar cell. So it is the ratio of electrical power output, maximum electrical power output from a solar cell to the solar irradiance hitting the array to the power of the solar radiation. Input power is the power of the sun and output power is the electrical power. So this output divided by input gives the conversion efficiency of a solar cell. And usually solar cells are having very low efficiencies. Typical values are in the range 10 to 12 percentage. So these are the various parameters, performance parameters of a solar cell.